life comes at you fast in sports. And sometimes you so closely associate a player with a team that it's really odd when that player is no longer there, whether it's due to retirement, he's traded away, or he leaves via free agency. It just doesn't feel right. And I look at Tony Parker and his decision after all of these seasons, what, 17 seasons, with the San Antonio Spurs, to go to Charlotte. Because, of course, Jordan would feel like he needed some of that Tony Parker action and take a two-year, $10 million contract to play with the Hornets just feels all types of fundamentally wrong. It really, truly does. It just does. Now, don't get me wrong. From the San Antonio Spurs standpoint, it's one of those things that you had some divisiveness there between Kawhi Leonard and Tony Parker, especially Parker's comments about the seriousness or lack of seriousness of Kawhi Leonard's injury compared to his own, da -da 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 -da, so on and so forth. Parker's been injury prone over the past several years of his career. He's really a shell of the player he once was. And for all intents and purposes, I think we could be kind to say that he's mostly washed up now. He's riding out the string, and he's being able to con the Hornets into giving them potentially $10 million over the next two years. But it still doesn't mean that it doesn't feel funny or doesn't feel weird, because Tony Mark Parker has meant so many good things for the San Antonio Spurs over all these seasons. This was a guy that was a star for them for many years, a cornerstone of what they did with him, Ginobili, and Duncan, and then later on you bring Kawhi Leonard into the fold. He led them, helped lead them to four NBA championships. And I always maintain this, that in the grand scheme of things, while people look at David Robinson as a superstar, a Hall of Famer, and legitimately so on so many different levels, I've always felt personally, blast away on me in the comments section if you want, but Tony Parker has been a better spur for longer and more important to that organization for a longer period of time than the Admiral ever was. No disrespect to the Admiral. Great player, Hall of Famer. But let's let's be real here. And as far as this goes, you know, you had Deontay Murray in San Antonio. What did he make? Second team all defense this year. He's the future at the point guard position for that team. Tony is in a role where he was kind of a mentor and you kind of got something out of him, but you really weren't getting that much out of him. And, you know, maybe some people are going to look at this and say Popovich and the Spurs are running off a legend. They're sending somebody off. Well, you know what? They are, and they're absolutely right to do so. Why would you want to give Tony Parker $5 million a season when you will be lucky to get 55 or 60 games out of them, and even what you do get out of them is not going to be that much. As far as Tony Parker goes, I don't begrudge him. You know, the way I look at it is very simple. You only get one chance with your career. It's your career. You do it as long as you want to do the damn thing, until they won't sign you anymore. Get as much chance to play as you possibly can. Get as much pay as you possibly can. Because once it's done, it's done. And there's really no turning back once you walk away. And you'll never be in that position again. So I do not begrudge Tony Parker for getting money elsewhere. I do not begrudge Tony Parker for going to play elsewhere. And in the grand scheme of things, I look at this from the Hornets' standpoint they're not going to expect a super ton of lot out of him anyways. They're going to expect some depth off of the bench, potentially maybe 20 minutes a game for the 55 or 60 games. Parker will actually be healthy enough to play. Maybe he'll be a nice mentor to guys like Kemba Walker and the young, other young guys on that Hornets team in that locker room. And if he could be that, then he probably is worth the $5 million. And in the grand scheme of things, even as a washed up player, $5 million in today's NBA and in today's NBA salary cap and financial climate isn't that bad for a guy that is going to go into the Hall of Fame, has four NBA championships. And let me repeat this again. Tony Parker is going to be in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He might not be the sexiest of Hall of Famers. He might not have the greatest numbers. But when you've been as consistent for so many years as he has and been such a key cog in so many things that 
a team like the Spurs was able to do and in some ways take a little bit of a step back in your own game for the greater good, which he did, and frankly all the Spurs did. Duncan Ginobili, Robinson did it earlier on. They all did. But I always think it's so funny where you look back at the early stages of Tony Parker's career when he came out of France, even on that 2003 championship team, there was a lot of criticism of Tony Parker and a lot of of questions about Tony Parker and whether he was truly that level of player, or if he was really that level of point guard, or if the Spurs needed to do better. And all these years later, people are talking about they're done with this crap and they're tired of this and it's going to suck to see him. They're comparing it to Olajuwon playing at the end of his string in Toronto and Ewing going to places like Seattle and Orlando and so on and so forth. And yeah, it's going to feel that strange. It really is. Like Duncan, Ginobili, Robinson all played their entire career with one team. It sucks that Parker had to leave, but for the greater good for where the Spurs were at, it absolutely had to happen. But there's no doubt someday the Spurs should retire his number, and in my mind there's no doubt that someday he deserves a place in the Basketball Hall of Fame. It's just really going to look funny, really feel strange, and borderline stupid to see him playing in Charlotte Hornets colors next year. Blech.